Well, thank you, my good friend, Will Ford, pastor, a minister of reconciliation and intercession. And I know some of the burden that is on you to bring reconciliation through the ministry of intercession to the U.S. and really throughout the world. Your story is deeply connected with Black history. Uh, and you have an artifact that you travel around and minister with. Could you tell us about this extraordinary artifact that you have in your home? Yes. So in my family, I have this amazing artifact that I've been taking around the country for about 22 years now. It's a 200-year-old uh, kettle pot. It was used by the slaves in my family. It's passed down from generation to generation. It was passed down because they secretly used it for cooking. They used it for washing clothes, but secretly they used it for prayer. And it was the instrument that they used as an acoustic means to keep their prayers from being heard from the slave master. So what they would do is they would go into a barn late at night to make sure their prayer meeting wasn't seen, but to make sure it wasn't heard, they used that cast iron kettle pot. So they would go into the middle of the cabin floor and they would take the pot and they would invert it. They would turn it upside down. They would then prostrate themselves on the ground and put their lips in between the opening between the ground and the kettle so that the kettle pot muffled their voices as they prayed through the night. And the story that they passed down with the pot is this, is that they didn't think they would see freedom in their time. So they prayed for the freedom of their children and the next generation. And so I've been taking that pot around the country to remind people, one, uh, just, the, just the power of prayer. Because think about it, that prayer bowl, in a sense, it caught their prayers as an acoustic means, a kettle did. But literally, there's a prayer bowl in heaven that catches our prayers. Revelation 5 and 8 said they're golden bowls in heaven, full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So every time we pray, it's collected by God. And at the right time, according to Revelation 8 through 5, God releases answers to those prayers and releases the whole thing to earth. And, uh, and, and so that's why I've been uh, traveling around the country with that kettle to remind people about the importance of prayer and also the generational inheritance and the responsibility to take the baton from the previous generation to move the chain forward in intercession. So my good friend Matt Lockett and I have written a book together called The Dream King, how the dream of Martin Luther King is being fulfilled to heal racism in America. 2003, 2004, I had this dream uh, with Dr. King in it. In the dream, God dealt with me about, about my, some unforgiveness issues that I had with some of the racism that I experienced growing up, about how I need to get rid of my, my unforgiveness baggage that I had around that. So I shared that with a good friend and he asked me to, hey, come share that story at the Lincoln Memorial MLK Celebration Day. So, well, that day I spoke. And then um, that night I was at a conference uh, there in Washington, D.C. There was a white guy that I met that night who was led to the conference because of the dream. He had a dream about the man who was over the event, never met him before, typed his name in Google, up pops the face of the man that he saw in his dream. He thought, OK, this is a trip. So he comes to that gathering. He, he and I became friends. We've been friends for for 17 years now. Well, fast forward, that white friend of mine, he found out that the Civil War ended in his family's front yard. I mean, it's a trip. You go there, there's a memorial stone in the front. It says, here, Lee fought his last battle, April 6, 1865. So we thought, man, what a cool coincidence. I have this kettle pot where slaves pray, slaves pray for freedom, and you have this house where General Lee fought his last battle. So we thought, wow, what a cool coincidence. But then we stumbled on more research and we learned that it was my friend Matt Lockett's family who owned my family where that kettle pot came from. And we met at the Lincoln Memorial, both led by dreams, to the place where Dr. King said, I have a dream that one day the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit together at the table of brotherhood. So it's like in all of our families, we have these things called generational blessings and generational curses that represent these dominating themes of storylines. And that's what got a shot in right now to America is this, what storyline do we want to be a part of? The healing or the hurt, the blessing or the curse? What storyline do we want to be a part of? And so that's kind of my heart for why I do what I do. And, uh, and uh, that's why we carry that kettle around the country to spur people on one for prayer, but also too, to actively get involved in bringing healing to this nation. I can't wait uh, for you to carry that kettle here and uh, Yo, uh, yeah 
I, I want I want my to put some prayers into that, and we're putting prayers. Into that. <laughs> Go on. So thank you, sir. You're an inspiration, um, and, and more than that, uh, you're uh, the, the the word friend is becoming more and more uh, or less and less aspirational, <laughs> uh, more and more real. And um, Most I, I look forward to um, finding a date um, um, where we can have you pray and minister and teach our my church i would love it can't wait to come in stir up this prayer yes sir uh, 